I'm going to show you how to build a timber screen to cover the water tank. The equipment we'll need for this is concrete for the posting. We need shovels, crowbar. We've got hammers and nails and a nail gun. We've got the cutting tools, saws, and we've got saw horses, squares, tape measures and pencils. And of course, we've got our safety equipment, earmuffs, glasses and gloves and a dust mask. The first thing I'll be putting down is this plinth board. Before nailing it down, I'll check to see that it's level. I'm just packing a little bit of dirt under it to lift it up so it's perfectly level. Now it's ready to nail up. So I use three nails. So I've now nailed it on both sides. I've leveled it perfectly. So it's ready to put posts in now. So I'll put both end posts in. I'll dig a hole first. One will get bolted to the brick wall and the other one will just get concreted into the ground. I've hit the footing on the brick wall now. I'm about 400 mil down. So the other side I can dig now and I'll be going about 600 into the ground for that one because that's going to carry the whole weight of the fence. So we're using hardwood posts for this job. We're bringing it forward so it lines up with the front of the garage and we've got a sleeper behind the plinth board. I need to cut a notch out of the bottom of both posts to be able to slide it forward. I now get to use my pencil and mark off where I need to cut the post with a pencil mark. We know that the sleep is 50 mil thick, so I need to cut a 50 mil notch out of the bottom of the post. So by putting it on my sawhorse, I've got a mark there now on the post. Now I cut a series of cuts about 35 mils apart at 50 mil deep. I've already set the saw cutting depth to 50 mil. I place the chisel right at the depth of the cut and just with the side of the hammer, so I don't hit my hands, just. And just clean up the edges a little bit. This doesn't need to be perfectly clean because it's going to be just in the ground. The idea is just that we have the 50 mil from here to the top. So this brings the face of it right up to the plinth board. So I'll just put this to the side for now and do the same with the next post. I'm now going to cut the height of the post cut the notches in the posts. Um, for that I've marked out a pre-made a stick with a mark out for the rails. Because we are capping this fence we have taken the top rail right to the top of the picket. What I can do now is use this stick that I've marked to sit on my plinth board and mark the height of the fence onto the brickwork. With that I can also mark the height on the post and with that I'll be able to mark the horizontal rails which are where I fix the pickets to. I've pre-cut a little piece of rail that allows me an easy way to mark out. What I do is I place it where my pencil marks have been put from the stick. I line that up with the edge of the post and all I have to do is simply just draw around. Because now I'm 45 and 70 both ways, when I cut across along there, cut across, I chisel it out and we'll have the exact same size as a rail. Now that I've got them marked out, I just get my circular saw out and I cut the notches. I just get my hammer and my chisel and I knock out the notches. Once we cut the ends of the rails, 45 degree, they should fit in there perfectly and we nail them in. Because we're doing the cap rail fence, I cut the post off at the top of the top rail. So I marked it with a square. I'm now ready to put the post in concrete, set them in. The top of the post matches the pencil mark. I'm now going to mix my concrete to set the post. I'm using a quick set concrete. By general rule, you, you add about five litres of water per bag. I've got three bags here, so I'll be using about a, a bucket and a bit. Now I'm going to spirit level the post. I'll pop, pop it in the hole. Now hold it in the post with one hand. Once you put the concrete in, just ram it with a shovel, get out all the air bubbles and pack it in nice and tight. You'll notice that this post has not been checked out yet, so there are no notches in there. 
and also that it's not against the fence. The rails will be cut in once the post is concreted in. Again, now we just hold it up and we start putting our concrete in. Now that the posts are concreted in, is the time to get the spirit level out again and make sure we've got it straight. Because after this, within half an hour, it'll be too late. Now that they're all plumb, is a good time to go have a cup of coffee. Um, you don't want to be touching them for at least an hour. Uh, if you're going to do any really heavy work on it, you need to wait about 24 hours. The next thing we'll be doing is we'll be bolting the post to the wall. For that, I'll use a pencil to mark about a third from the top, about a third from the bottom, in the middle of the brick. Then we will use a spade bit to countersink the bolt. The bolt's 100 mil long. So now I've got my 11 mil drill bit, and this will be putting a hole through the post so the bolt can slide easily through the post. And then I'll be using a 10 mil masonry bit on a proper hammer drill to drill into the bricks. Now that I've drilled my holes into the bricks, I'll be tapping the hammer in the bolts into the hole and using a half inch socket set to tighten them up. Now the next thing I'll be doing is putting my cuts for the railings on this post. I've already done the post against the wall, so I'll be using the same marking stick to give us a uniform position for the rails. I use my little off cut of rail to make sure that the notch is the right size and I'll be getting the circular saw and cutting the three notches out. My next step is using the hammer and the chisel to knock the notches out. On this post here, as soon as we're running the rails right up to the paling fence, we've cut the notches straight through the post. The next step I'll be doing is cutting the top of the post off using the handsaw. I'm now measuring the length of the rail. So by holding the tape measure right to the paling fence and taking the measurement up to the outside edge of the 45. Now I transfer that measurement onto my rail using the square to get a straight line. The next thing I'll be doing is I'll be cutting this rail um, on the 45 degree angle. Now I've set my saw to 45 degree angle on the plate. Because it's a light piece of timber I'll be using some clamps to hold it onto the saw horses otherwise it's likely to move as I'm cutting. I'll be cutting my other two rails in exactly the same way. So the next thing we'll be doing is we'll be nailing the rails onto the post using a nail gun. Uh, that'll give us a spot to screw our pickets onto. I use two nails on a slight angle, which helps it hold a little better when it, the rails try to pull straight out. On this post, I use four nails. That's because the rail spread out for the whole thickness of the post and helps hold it in better so the rail doesn't twist. The next thing I'll be doing is I'll be drilling the holes for the screws into my hardwood picket. So to make it easier, I hold it in place where I'm going to be attaching it. I'm using two screws at each rail, so I mark about the middle of the rail. So now that I've marked my picket, I'll be using a cordless drill with a countersink bit, allowing the screw to sit flush in the picket. I'll now go through and do the rest of my pickets with the same drill bit. But the next step we'll be doing is fixing on the pickets. Now we'll be using a 50mm galvanised timber screw. And we're using the spirit level to spirit level every picket as we fix it on to get it nice and straight. As you notice, I'm using my 8mm drill bit as a spacer to keep every picket space the same. I put it in between the pickets and I wedge the outside picket in with my knee that holds the drill. I've got two free hands. So now that we've finished our screen, the capping on top of it will be the finishing touch. For that I will just be using my drill driver and some 50mm timber screws and I'll be screwing two screws approximately every 4-500mm. Now the screws are going into the top railing is the reason we took the top railing right to the top of the picket and the reason I splay the two screws is stopping the capping from warping over time. So this is how you build a timber picket screen. Uh, the capping gives a really nice finish and job done.